This is Motor in Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motor news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Tim Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the problems with PUV modernization. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smart portion centers on what to do when one encounters a broken white center line. This week's Bang Chaper shall be about the illegal practice of most PUV drivers of overloading passengers. Showcase this week shall have the compact SUV crossover from Chevrolet that tracks Red Line. While for race weekend, we shall have the highlights of the 2023 Radical Challenge Philippines fourth leg. All these plus the latest use in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's episode of Motoring Today. Join us! Life should be filled with stories to be liked and loved. Elevate your drive with the new Honda City. Take value and performance to the next level so you can view more places and check into new experiences. With Honda Sensing, you can do all these with peace of mind with its modern design and advanced features. The new Honda City is for those who are ready to step up their game. The new Honda City. Elevate your drive. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. The EDSA busway just got more exclusive, and all because a senator got his pride peaked. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority just issued a new memorandum further limiting the vehicles allowed on the EDSA busway. In the new memorandum, use of the EDSA busway is limited to authorized passenger buses, on-duty emergency and police vehicles, cars used for construction, maintenance, security of the bus lane, convoys of the President, the Vice President, the Senate President, the House Speaker, and the Supreme Court Chief Justice. According to MMDA Chairman Romando Artes, the new memorandum removed clearly marked government vehicles from the list of those allowed to use the EDSA busway lane. Doon po sa aming mga kasamahan sa pamahalaan, hindi na po pwede ang clearly marked government vehicles sa bus carousel. Also not included on the list are vehicles of cabinet officials, senators, and congressmen bearing the protocol plates of 6, 7, and 8. The new memorandum was issued after Senator Bong Revilla called out MMDA Task Force Special Operations Unit Head Colonel Bong Nebrija for reporting him as having been on a vehicle apprehended on the EDSA busway but let go as a courtesy. Revilla angrily denied the report and accepted Nebrija's apology but still called for Nebrija to resign. Soon after, Artes placed Nebrija under preventative suspension for the action. This all happened after the MMDA began strictly enforcing the EDSA busway restrictions while increasing the fines and penalties for violations. The MMDA appears to be really bent on keeping the EDSA busway exclusive.
Meanwhile, there are millions of delinquents on the road. Delinquent motor vehicles, that is. Not delinquent drivers. And that's according to the LTO itself. The Land Transportation Office reports that around 25.7 million vehicles in its record are classified as delinquent. These are vehicles that were never registered or whose registrations have not been renewed. The LTO said that the number can even be higher because this does not include data past April of 2022 when the LTO began using the Land Transportation Management System. According to LTO Chief Vigor Mendoza II, the list includes motor vehicles whose registration has not been renewed for more than a year. Of the 25 million delinquent motor vehicles, 20 million are motorcycles, 4 million are four-wheeled vehicles, and 490,000 are trucks and buses. Vigor said the number is alarming because many delinquent vehicles may not have passed roadworthiness inspections and are not covered by the required insurance coverage. The number also means revenue losses for government from uncollected registration fees and penalties that amount to 37 billion pesos, said the LTO. Because of this, the LTO is reviving the no-registration, no-travel policy. How will the LTO and authorized deputies strictly enforce the no-registration, no-travel policy? That question is surely going to be asked. Continuing, the good news is that the Silang Aguinaldo Interchange is now open, making even more of the Calax operational. Even better news is that it won't add to toll. The Silang Aguinaldo Interchange, a 3.9 kilometer 2x2 lane subsection of the Cavite Laguna Expressway, is now open to motorists. The newly opened interchange provides a quicker and more convenient route for motorists heading to Tagaytay, Silang, and other parts of Cavite. It is also expected to help decongest traffic on the Aguinaldo Highway, the busiest road in Cavite. Until further notice, motorists can use the newly opened Calac subsection at no added cost, according to concessionaire MP Cala Holdings Incorporated. Motorists will only be charged up to the Silang East Interchange toll fee, it added. The Calax will further extend to a total of 45 kilometers up to Kawit in Cavite by 2024 and provide a link to the Manila Cavite Expressway. Right now, we are uh, doing our construction for subsection 3 uh, that will span from uh, Silang until uh, General Trias. So that will be two interchanges. One will be the Open Canal Interchange and the other one is the Governor's Drive Interchange. So that is ongoing in construction. And uh, we hope to finish that by 2024. And we hope to finish the whole Calax by 2025. Motorists should take advantage of the free use of the newly opened subsection of the Calax. This should make weekend motoring jaunts to Tagaytay even more popular and convenient. And finally, the transport authorities bending under pressure from recent protest actions by jeepney groups. They seem to be making a lot of new clarifications to appease protesting groups. LTFRB Chairman Teofilo Guadis III has assured members of the Senate that his agency will continue to assist drivers and operators of jeepneys to modernize their operations even after the year-end deadline to consolidate. During a hearing of the Senate Committee on Public Affairs, chaired by Senator Grace Po, Guadis said, That is my commitment and the commitment of my agency. This is what we intend to do. Watt has added that the deadline is meant to urge drivers to come together and start the formation as a cooperative in pursuit of modernization. The December deadline is not for the phase-out of traditional jeepney units, he also said. We are not asking them to phase out the jeepney. Their fear is that if we go on uh, this modernization scheme, their jeeps will be a uh, uh, change and that uh, they will really lose their franchises, which is not true. Perhaps we can expect more clarifications over what happens to operators of traditional jeepneys under the government's PUV modernization program and whether a phase-out will actually happen and how.
And those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. Has consolidation benefited cooperatives and its members as well as drivers of modern jeepneys? This is a question needing to be asked, even as transport authorities maintain that consolidation is non-negotiable. Motoring Forum discusses the experience of some of those participating in the PUV modernization program. As the year-end deadline approaches for consolidation, Transport groups are holding protest actions to air grievances against the mandate to form cooperatives or corporations and participate in the PUV modernization program. Transport authorities see consolidation as a vital piece of the program to modernize public transport to make it safer, more convenient, and sustainable. Consolidation will allow PUV operators to avail themselves of financial and other incentives to acquire the modern units that comply with new standards for various classifications of PUVs set by government. But transport groups and individual drivers still resisting consolidation have been arguing that the modernization program is not feasible as implemented by the government. Many claim they can't afford to acquire the modern PUVs and that operating could prove unprofitable. Among those now saying consolidation is not benefiting members of cooperatives is an official of a cooperative. According to Pasig Mandaluyong Quiapo Operators and Drivers Alliance Transport Service Cooperative Secretary Oscar de la Peña, his cooperative has not earned a profit in the three years since it formed and joined the PUV modernization program. De La Peña said the cooperative has not earned dividends from members and officials and debt has ballooned to 4 million pesos. The cooperative has written letters informing the LTFRB and the Department of Transportation about its problems and asking for solutions. A member of another cooperative, Guadalupe FTI Jeepney Operators and Drivers Association Incorporated, has another complaint. Its cooperative tied up with a Chinese national who reneged on agreements and did not pay. Another driver who drove PUVs for a cooperative claims he didn't earn enough because while he was promised a salary, instead of paying a boundary, quotas were set that cut into his earnings. These kind of situations point to flaws in the PUV modernization program that government needs to address. Otherwise, this won't be sustainable. However, an official of another cooperative continues to support the modernization program for another reason. According to 997 Sandigan Transport Cooperative Chairman Ferdinand Lupangosi, consolidation allows the LTFRB to easily check if PUVs are legitimately plying their assigned groups, which is difficult if individual franchises remain the norm. Some of the complaints against the PUV modernization program seem to be caused by individuals who don't take the guidelines seriously or are out-and-out out fraudsters. This may be the next problem needing to be solved by the LTFRB to ensure the PUV modernization program progress. That's our Motoring Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart racing exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS, bring on the thrill. back with us here on Motoring Today and we now have this week's important motoring tips starting off with some road safety reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines.
katulad ng pinapakita sa animation, broken white center lines separate the movement of traffic on multi-lane roads. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay bawal kang dumaan sa gitna o sa mismong linya. But if you're crossing it to overtake or to change lanes, then just keep in mind na ang mga sasakyan na nasa kabilang lane ay may right of way. So, wait for your turn. Continuing with this week's edition of Morning Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Pang Chuper this week. Apayo Chuper lang, kaibigan. Ako si Aliano Luico, isang kapwanyo Chuper. Huwag nang ipilit magsakay ng pasayero kung hindi nakasya. Ang bawat pampasadang sasakyan ay mayroong tinatawag na passenger limit o bilang ng mga pasahero na magkakasya. Kapag puno na, iwasang magtawag pa ng ilan at ipagsiksikan. Tandaan din na bawal maglagay ng ekstra bangko sa gitna ng pampasadang sasakyan. Palaging isipin na mahalaga rin na komportable ang ating mga pasahero. Ito po si Alejandro Loico, payong chopper lang. Kaibigan, mula sa inyong kapwa niyo, chopper. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. Inigo Anton won six of the nine races held over the first three rounds of the 2023 Radical Challenge Philippines. Let's find out in this race weekend what happened during the fourth and final round of this year's Radical Challenge held at the Clark International Speedway on November 24 and 25. So this is the Radical SR1, the base model of uh, Radical. It has uh, 185 uh, horsepower, 490 kilos. This average of two minutes or under two minutes around the Clark circuit here and tops out at about uh, 215 to 220 kilometers an hour down the main straight. The car has a lot of downforce, good aerodynamics. It produces real downforce and uh, it helps with the handling, especially on the high speed corners here. It really pushes down on the car and gives more grip. The reason why I chose this particular series is because one, it's similar to a go-kart and the way you drive it is what a go-kart would a go-kart driver would actually go for since it's a rear wheel drive and it's the only class where it's one of the fastest cars in the series here in Philippines. So for me it kind of dictates me to actually enjoy this race and actually enjoy the outcome of whatever happens. And in terms of the future I see big things on this series. Obviously, it's kind of new. Me and some other drivers are the particular bread and butter of like what this series could be in the future. The more and more races that particular series is actually um, going for, it has a bright future ahead. Basically. Preparations and challenges. I feel like every racer has that same kind of preparation and challenges, but it depends on the day itself. Obviously, engine, tires, how to improve the driving of the driver and basically what is the outcome or result of getting the perfect setup and everything else. So it really uh, 
felt um, pretty good, you know, able to bring home three wins in that uh, round three for the whole team. We were really satisfied with what we did, especially coming from how we started the season. We did um, win, win some races, but after that we found the right setup with all the teams and we drove a very clean and consistent race. It was pretty challenging because uh, coming into this uh, uh, round three of Clark, um, you know, everybody was getting closer. The competition was, um, you know, more competitive, and yeah, it was really, you know, really took a lot of mental and physical training to be able to, you know, just withstand all the pressure that that was happening. It's we're getting closer to the championship, so all the pressures in your mind about scoring good points and trying to also be clean and um, not crash out during the race. So, you know, fortunately enough, I was able to hold on to those wins. I'd like to thank everybody for, you know, always the continuous support I've been racing for, you know, 12 years already. I'm thanking to everybody who's helped me throughout this, um, throughout my journey. And hopefully now that I'm making the step forward up to Formula 4, that I can really show what I've got and what I've learned from all of you. Thank you so much, everyone, and, you know, hope to, hope to do well for all of you. The 2023 Radical Challenge Philippines has provided local motorsports heroes a venue to further hone their skills beyond grassroots racing. This year's exciting season should whet our appetite for another season of Radical Challenge racing in 2024. And that's this week's World of Motorsports. We'll be back after this short break. Into new heights. If you're having problems, of course, if there's any problems, especially with the paint, if you wanted to have the paint corrected, uh, just let us know. Just give us a call. Drop by our shop so we could assess, para we could uh, show you and uh, give you yung gagawin sa cars niyo especially for the paint job. So we could detail the car and probably put ceramic coating on it. Our shop also offers ceramic coating, interior, exterior, engine, and um, glass detailing. We also um, offer premium car wash. We also do paint job, certain panels na kailangan natin repaint. So we also do that. We also do um, a wash over paint also for cars. So, Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. This showcase takes a look at the new generation Chevrolet Trax Red Line, the brand's entry to the crowded compact SUV crossover segment. The Chevrolet Trax wasn't the success that local Chevrolet distributor the Covenant Car Company Incorporated, or TCCCI, envisioned. Perhaps it was the data design or the unimpressive mix of comfort and convenience features, or the powertrain and driver assist and safety technologies that some may have found wanting, especially when compared to the competition. Maybe it was also the price points. So has the arrival of the next generation Chevrolet Trax addressed such concerns? The design of the next generation tracks can no longer be said to be dated. It is sleek, sporty, 
and very contemporary with a fascia featuring the new Chevy Signature LED II DRL and headlamps. The headlamp on the new tracks comes with auto control as well as manual electronic leveling control. Also LEDs are the taillights and high level stop lamps. Sharp character lines, spoiler, thin type antenna add to the sporty contemporary look. At 4,537 millimeters long, 2,035 millimeters at its widest point, and 1,567 millimeters tall with roof rack, the new Trax is longer and wider than its predecessor. The new Trax also sits a good 186 millimeters off the ground and comes with a 2,700 millimeter long wheelbase. The new generation Chevrolet Trax is offered in three variants or trim levels. The entry-level tracks is the LT at 1.793 million pesos. The mid-priced one is the red light at 1.866 million, while the top of the line is the RS at 1.948 million. The red line as well as the RS features piano black front and rear bumper garnish. Both also have high-gloss black side view mirrors that power adjust and fold, while also featuring a heater function. The design of the two-tone machine-faced 18-inch alloy wheel on the red line also look quite distinctive and edgy. The red line and the RS also come with a power lift gate which makes it very convenient to get into the luggage area which now has a bigger cargo volume of 1,405 liters. Chevrolet has also upped the ante when it comes to interior design and comfort and convenience features in the tracks that start with smart key passive entry system and push button start. There is edginess to the track's interior, especially with the asymmetric design of the dash. The interior color scheme is jet black with red accents on the track's red line and RS variants. The instrument cluster and the display for the infotainment system are angled towards the driver. The red line and the RS feature an 8-inch high-definition digital multi-information display. Here can be displayed the speed, the rev counter, and other such vital info as fuel range, fuel economy, the tire pressure monitoring system, as well as seat belt warnings for driver, front, and rear passengers. Dominating the center of the dash is the 11-inch touchscreen display for the infotainment system that comes with smartphone integration, tuner, audio, aux input, Bluetooth, as well as six speakers in the red line and the RS. The 11-inch touchscreen is also where rear-view camera is displayed. The seats on the red line feature white and black perforated leather style upholstery with red stitching. The driver's seat on the track's red line and RS can be electronically adjusted eight ways to help get the preferred driving position, along with a steering wheel column that tilts and telescopes. The steering wheel is also wrapped in leather style upholstery and feature controls for phone, radio, and cruise control. It also has a heater function. The front passenger seat can be adjusted manually four ways. There's plenty of leg and headroom in the back for three passengers, made more comfortable by the flat flooring. The rear seat for three splits and folds 60-40 and feature an armrest with cup holder. Other comfort and convenience features include power windows, power door locks, automatic climate control with rear air vet console and pollen filters. Chevrolet offers only one engine option for the new generation tracks, locally, a 1.2-liter three-cylinder turbocharged gasoline engine. The engine provides enough power and torque, 137 HP at 5,000 RPM and 220 Nm from 2,500 to 4,000 RPM to make the tracks a nimble and fun drive. Power and torque are set to the front wheels by a 6-speed automatic transmission. The track suspension system uses McPherson struts in front and torsion beams in the rear. Ride and handling are both comfortable and composed even when taking curves at speed. Road imperfections are softened well enough. Providing confident stopping power is a brake system featuring 16-inch ventilated discs on the front wheels and 16-inch solid discs in the rear. Making the tracks even more fun and safe to drive is a wide array of advanced safety features and driver assistance systems. Enhancing stability and control are anti-lock brake system with electronic brake distribution, cornering brake control, traction control system, engine drag control, panic brake assist, enhanced hill start assist, Port vectoring by brakes, rollover mitigation, advanced driver assistance technologies include forward collision alert, following distance indicator, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, auto control high beam, enhanced front pedestrian detection, and low speed imminent collision brake. 
For safety and security, the Trax is equipped with three-point ELR seatbelts for all five passengers with a driver and front seat passenger getting force limiter and multiple SRS airbags, anti-theft alarm system, and engine immobilizer. The Covenant Car Company Incorporated has rolled out a new generation Chevrolet Trax that checks all the boxes of concerns that may hinder its predecessor's local success. The question now is whether local buyers believe the new Trax is competitively priced. That's our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Welcome back to More Learn Today, the auto industry takes center stage. The Covenant Car Company Incorporated has taken on another automotive marquee in its distribution network. The local distributor of Chevrolet is now overseeing the distribution of KG Mobility from South Korea. KG Mobility is the latest brand to be managed by the Covenant Car Company Inc. Uh, or TCCCI. And KGM actually has 70 years of history already. They were founded in 1954. Coincidentally, it's also the same year when TCCCI's mother company was also founded in 1954. So both brands are celebrating 70 years of history in 2024. During the formal introduction of KG Mobility Philippines, five members of its local lineup were also launched. KG Mobility is a Korean automotive SUV specialist that's had 70 years in innovation and SUV making capability and manufacturing capability. Uh, right now is the launch of KG Mobility in the Philippines. We just launched the Torres, the Tivoli and the Tivoli Grand. We'll also be launching the Rexton and the Muso very soon. We think that we can give Filipino buyers the good options that we presented to you here. Five models in all plenty of variants, very attractive pricing. Uh, in fact, we've got intro pricing coming up, uh, which will be good until January. Introductory prices for the Tivoli start at 898,888 pesos. The Tivoli grad at 1,188,888 pesos. The Torres at 1,868,888 pesos. The Rexton at 2,248,888 pesos and the Muso Grand at 1,198,888 pesos. We hope to have about 12 dealerships at the end of our first year. We've launched, as I said, five new models, and we hope to promote the brand and get a lot of people to be engaged and involved in KG Mobility. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 37th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. In honor of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Tim Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.